All right, I'm going to explain a little bit about a project that we did um, for Luminaria 2012. Uh, we embedded a bunch of LEDs into T-shirts, and um, the T-shirts are hooked up to a box that contains a microprocessor, a battery, and four switches. And the cool thing about the microprocessor that we used is, it, is that it also has a transceiver so the um, t-shirts can essentially talk to each other or be controlled by a, um, a computer. Um, <clears throat> the LEDs we attach to the shirt using uh, patches of cloth and we use some uh, cloth glue that we picked up at uh, Michael's. Uh, we did learn that uh, we had to use a bit more glue than we thought just to keep the LEDs from twisting around. Uh, the wire that, that uh, we ordered had a little bit thicker jacket on it than, than we expected and it made it stiffer. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit of functionality of the uh, control box. Um, we have an on off switch. We have a um, switch to to uh, switch between an autonomous mode and a radio mode. So when it's in autonomous mode, it doesn't listen to any kind of radio traffic. It just does what the user tells it to. Um, we had that mode, or set up that mode, in case we had problems with the radios or there was too much uh, local RF noise wherever we were operating, we could still control the shirts and, and do various things. Um, then we have two buttons. These uh, are, are mode buttons. So you can enter the uh, menu system and exit the menu system and also select which light pattern or mode you want to run. And then we have a little cheat sheet here also. Uh, so to enter the menu, you press both at the same time. And uh, whichever LED is lit up indicates which mode you're on. So we can go all the way through there. Um, let's see. And uh, then you press press the uh, two buttons again at the same time to enter that mode, and it'll run it until you know you switch it off or switch modes. In addition to the uh, mode selection on the A and B buttons, you can press the B button, and that will flash the shirt LEDs. Um, we added that mode so that if we were in an area that had maybe music or something, we could flash the LEDs to the music and make it look like we're doing some kind of very complex um, audio processing to uh, control the shirts. Um, the A button um, can speed up and slow down the patterns. Um, it's, it's a little buggy sometimes. Um, but otherwise, otherwise it works. So, um, let's see, for the, for the shirts, um, we used um, pixels, LED pixels, and embedded them in the t-shirt. The LED pixels um, look like this. They're uh, maybe about 12 millimeters in diameter. Um, there's a red, green, blue LED in the front and a controller chip in the back and you, to use these you daisy chain them um, in series with each other and depending on the sequence that you send out the, uh, con the uh, control signals determines which um, LED is which color and, and whatnot. Well that's sort of my bit of explanation. <clears throat> so we used LED pixels for the uh, LEDs um, it consists of a red, green, blue LED and a controller chip in the back. Um, to use these, you connect them all in, in series. So you basically daisy chain them together. <clears throat> um, those are all controlled by a G node, J E E N O D E. And that consists of an RFM 12B radio operating at 433 megahertz and an AT Mega 328 running the Arduino bootloader and uh, we also 
programmed it using the Arduino toolkit. Um, we integrated all of that into a box. I'll show you the inside of that. <clears throat> um, the batteries that we used were Energizer Lithium Ultimate, uh, double A's, we used three of them. And um, I don't think we've tested how long the, the run, run time is in this configuration, um, but with an early development um, program running on the same set of batteries, we were able to get about 13 hours um, doing very, various patterns, 13 hours of runtime that is. Um, but the LEDs will continue to work um, longer than the radio will at a certain point. The radio will stop receiving packets correctly, but the LEDs will continue to uh, run correctly. Um, to increase the range and improve reception, um, we built a um, base antenna. And um, we had, had this inside of a, a, a piece of PVC pipe that continued to go up, but it's a uh, collinear um, antenna. And it's uh, designed for 433 megahertz, and uh, the gain is roughly 6 dB. Um, and there's the G node attached. Um, we considered doing amplification, but we figured that, that would cause a lot of problems, and um, we were on a really short deadline and very tight budget, so um, the collinear antenna uh, is what we went with. Um, with the collinear antenna and the uh, stock G node antennas, uh, we're, we're able to get about 600 feet of pretty decent solid reception. Um, beyond that, it gets kind of sketchy, some of the packets are dropped or they don't pass the CRC. Um, and closer than that, of course, it works a lot better. Um, we even got that kind of range during uh, Luminaria. So uh, the antenna worked really well. Another little detail that uh, we added was a disconnect connector. So, um, the shirts and, and the uh, electronics can be disconnected. In case there's a problem with the shirt, we can do troubleshooting and make sure it's not the controller or vice versa. Or if um, we wanted to have certain people stand in a certain order, we could just switch the controller rather than having to reprogram the IDs in the uh, controller boxes. If you want to learn a little bit more about the technical design of the shirt, Check out our wiki at tinbitworks.com. All right, so we're going to demo the radio mode. We have all of the t-shirts set up, and we're going to go through the patterns each one at a time. The first mode that we're going to test is uh, just turning LED, all the LEDs off. We can also do the rainbow mode and double rainbow, linear wipe, vertical wipe, Radial wipe, radar sweep, twinkle, fireworks. Comb jellies, stains, firefly,
you'll notice that a lot of these themes are based on bioluminescent animals and that was our main inspiration for the t-shirts and the artwork which was done by Amy Middleton and uh, also it was the inspiration for the uh, LED lighting patterns we have an identification mode that uh, shows the node ID of each one of the shirts with the number of LEDs that are lit up and another cool mode called paint which allows you to change the color of all the shirts by touching the touch screen on the laptop um, where you touch whichever color you touch is what it sets the uh, t-shirts to this was a really cool mode when we were listening to music because we could just tap on the screen to the beat of the music and it would change the LEDs to a different color and it would look like we were synchronizing the shirts to the music and doing some really complex audio processing but really we were just uh, telling the shirts to change color manually. These are all the pre-programmed modes. We also did a bunch of uh, we also did a macro mode which allows us to send the color that each LED should be on each one of the shirts and we'll just go through uh, some of these little macro modes some of them are very simple and short and some of them are a bit longer and more complex Uh, this is the Knight Rider mode. Uh, Pac-Man mode. Uh, police mode. Another mode that just uh, runs red, green, and blue. Uh, a range test mode. We use this uh, typically just to check and see if, if uh, we're dropping packets. So it just rotates a uh, red, green, and blue pixel around the shirt, uh, but now it's on the back side of the shirt. Uh, Another rotate mode. Smiley face. This is a pretty uh, long macro that uh, sets the LEDs to a bunch of different colors. This is uh, see what we uh, called seizure mode. Another pretty long macro. Um, this one is uh, a spiral color changing mode. There's a lot of other modes that we wanted to implement, but uh, we didn't really have time to write all of them.
We can also individually address each shirt and set the um, mode on each one of the shirts to a particular thing individually. But the uh, interface could probably Im be improved a little bit. It's a little clunky. Um, a few times we had to restart the master control program. Um, it would crash and then you'd get erratic behavior on, on the t-shirts. But that wasn't too big of a problem. And um, that's all of the uh, standard modes and macros. We're gonna, we have one more mode to demo and it's called Clock Sync. It's an autonomous mode, so the laptop is not controlling the shirts and is not needed for this mode. Um, the individual uh, shirts are talking to each other to synchronize the flashing, and it's a totally distributed way to uh, synchronize their uh, clocks. I'm going to go ahead and demo the clock sync pattern. So we have all of the uh, shirts ready to go and we're going to go ahead and start, start them. And now they're all pretty much in in uh, sync there. And that's the clock sync program. Yeah, there's there are uh, some areas and some fireflies that will um, sort of spontaneously start flashing in sync with each other. And so if you can imagine like an entire field of fireflies um, flashing in sync.